Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear, and today we are reviewing this, the Immolet LD10, quite possibly the world's coolest EDC. Look at that, it's got a little OLED, can you see? Is that what makes it the world's coolest EDC? Well, 1200 lumens in a package that's supposed to be the same size as your thumb. My thumb's a little bit smaller than the one on the photo, but pretty cool overall. Let's get the review started. Alright guys, so here it is, the uh, Immolent LD10 ADC. I asked for this light from uh, Banggood, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get one. They're only like 18 bucks, so it's pretty good value. Uh, we'll run over what it comes with. It comes in a pretty cool box, I guess. Stuff the damn box. It's even got a cover on it. So it comes with the uh, LD10, I should say, and a battery that is inbuilt. So you cannot remove the battery, so keep that in mind. Uh, and it's got a proprietary charger too, which we'll talk more about later. But I'll just show you guys what it comes with. You get instructions with it, you get the Immolent uh, lanyard, which I love, I love the lanyards. Uh, you get the uh, charger, it does come with it. You get a pack of silica uh, to keep it dry in there. And also you get a, um, oh, where's it going now? A diffuser. I do not know why, but they, they give you a diffuser with it too. So let me just throw that stuff over there. I can take the silicon out of there, you idiot. So that's what you get. So for 18 bucks, it's already off to a pretty good start because you get the 18350 in there too. So can't complain. All right, we'll just run over some specs quickly. So it's got a uh, Cree XBL HI, which you can see there. Um, you can also see uh, that the uh, reflector is an OP style reflector. I'm not sure if it's AR coated glass. We'll see what the uh, manual says. It's got a uh, built-in OLED screen, which is on this side. You can see that's a little screen there. When I turn it on, you'll be able to see it. It's got a USB magnetically charging function, uh, make it easy to get power. So it's pretty much its best selling point is its size. It's 72 mils in length by 22.5 millimeters in diameter. And with the battery, it weighs 58 grams, so it is a pretty tiny light um, overall. And it does look pretty cool too. I quite like the way that it looks, and you get the OLED screen, which is a bonus. Um, what else? So it's got a high efficiency, constant current circuit, will maintain constant brightness output. Um, so yes, it's got a <laughs> combination of tough and ultra clear mineral anti-reflective coating glass, so it does have AR coated glass. Can we see it? Oh yeah, you can. You can see it there. Of course, this thing is here too. The uh, bezel is blue. It kind of throws you off a bit. But yeah, you can definitely see it. Blah, blah, blah. So aluminium OP reflector. It's obviously, it's made out of aero grade aluminium alloy body. Um, and type 3 hard anodizing, as you would expect. Um, IPX8 standard waterproof to under 2 meters. So of course, it is a fully sealed light. You do lose some of that functionality, but you gain it. Well, you do lose some features, but you gain that back with functionality, which is eh, pretty good. Um, and impact resistant to 1.5 meters. So that's pretty much the main specs, I guess. Um, we'll run over the uh, modes and whatnot, and then we'll have a little talk about the light. So on turbo mode, it'll do 1200 lumens. Uh, I measured mine at about actually 1300 lumens, and then it did step down pretty fast. Um, I'll try and get a chart for you guys and show you the step down, um, but right now my um, Bluetooth meter will not connect. So that's turbo mode. High mode is 800 lumens. So I should say turbo is 1200, then 500 lumens. So you only get two minutes of turbo mode, which I am not getting on this night. I do not know where they tested it, in the Antarctic or somewhere, but I am not getting that long of a runtime. Mine stepped down after like, 30 seconds. So high mode is 800 lumens, then 500 lumens. Um, middle mode is 500 lumens. Middle low mode is 150 lumens. And low mode is 10 lumens. So basically, turbo mode, high mode, it's going to step down. Even medium mode will step down. I guess eventually, maybe even middle low will step down because 150 lumens is still quite a bit for a light like this size. Um, it's beam distance 247 meters. Because it is using a Cree XPL HI. The reflector is actually a pretty big size if you have a look. Compared to other lights of its size, it's a pretty big size. Um, which is 15,288 CD. And yeah. 
Alright guys, so functionality wise, I think it's pretty cool. This is the uh, on and off switch there at the back. So you can see it is fairly level. If we rock it here, you can see... Oh, look at the camera. Look at how it's doing that. It's pretty cool. I'm going to move it back a bit. So we rock it here. It's not going to turn on. But you can see that it is unlocked. Uh, can I call this a pro and a con? Because basically, sometimes when I go to turn it on and my fat fingers, I can't actually click it that easy. And other times, like it's sometimes it's a little bit hard to find the button. So if it was in the dark and you did have to find the button, um, I'm sure if you were used to the light, you'd be able to feel it after a while. But um, like right now, like if it's dark and I push it, it could be a little bit hard. Um, that's a pro and a con, I guess, because it's good because you're not going to switch it on. But either way, if you from off, if you click four times fast, it should go into lock mode, and you can see the little padlock there. So it does have a locking feature, which is cool, so you're not going to accidentally turn it on. So when you want to switch it off, and there it's unlocked. So the OLED screen is pretty cool. If you turn the light on now, you'll see what the OLED screen displays, saying it's on the lowest mode, 10 lumens. Um, show me here. And the battery is at 3.96 volts. And then if we push and hold, 3.99 volts actually. Four point, it's getting higher. How is that happening? And then if we go up one mode, so it'll say 150 lumens, and then it's saying that it's hot. So yeah. And then we go up a mode again, and right now it's not displaying it because it is pretty warm inside the shed, so keep that in mind. Um, it's saying 500 lumens, 3.81 volts. We'll go up 800 lumens, you can see it there. And double click to get to 1200 lumens. Um, so Emulent do not write it in the manual, but it does have a built-in 18350, which we can only assume the capacity of should be about 800 to 1000 milliamps at the most. So uh, runtime in all the modes isn't going to be the best, but it's going to be more than adequate for most people and the EDC. So while we're still talking about the OLED, it does also have a um, what's it called? A low power warning. So with the flashlight on, when the battery pack voltage is lower than 3.1 volts, the battery symbol on the OLED display will flash 8 times per 30 seconds to remind users to replace battery pack or charge it. Mm. Um, yes, you cannot replace the battery pack, you have to charge it. So I do not know. It does have an intelligent thermal control um, also, and you can see the OLED does actually time itself out, so it doesn't stay on the whole time as to waste en energy there. Um, so yeah, it's going it's to have a step down. Uh, it's got a memory function too, so whatever mode you leave it on, the flashlight will remember when you turn it on next time. Uh, I don't think that applies for turbo mode, but you can't do that. And it's got the lockout like I've already said. So, um, yeah. Alright lads, so there's one part of this light that I'm kind of on the fence about. Um, it's an inbuilt charger. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Um, well, I don't know. I don't like the fact that you can't get the battery out because I would like that. Op I would like to be able to charge a battery in my own charger, check the voltage myself, make sure that in internal voltage is working properly. And you know, I could probe positive and negative here and do that, which is fine, um, not a problem. But yeah, um, I like the fact that it's probably safer. Well, not safer, it probably makes it more rugged and more waterproof having th only this here compared to having an actual USB port because I've got my ELF C1 by Army Tech, which is supposed to be, you know, Army Tech is supposed to be the world's hardest wearing lights. It's got a built-in micro USB and you can see the flap's gone. I think they did give me a spare flap with it, but I don't have it anywhere. So, overall, I think this is a better solution. My only qualm is, one, it doesn't fit the best. So if we put it on, it's magnetic. Uh, my lights is flickered then because I'm using the same charger. There we go. Now that's on and you can see it charging. Uh, my other thing is, to what happens if you were to break this or lose it? or whatnot, like how much is it going to cost you to replace it because it is a proprietary cable. Um, you know what I mean? It's not just a normal USB cable that you can go out there and spend 2 $3 on. 
um, you got to also keep that in mind. The light overall isn't too expensive. It's only $18, but, you know, mind you, if you do lose this cable or break it or don't carry it with you and you go away somewhere and you got to charge this light, how are you going to charge it? So it's a pro and it's a con too. I like the idea because it does help keep our water and everything, but I would really like to be able to access the battery, which I cannot do. But overall, I really like the light. The OLED screen, it's a bit of a gimmick, like I, I understand, but it is pretty cool to have on a little light like this. You know, it's bright, it's powerful, it looks nice, it's well made. To be honest, this is probably one of the best inlet lights that I've ever had um, compared to the DM70, compared to my HR20. I think that this is a lot better built and a lot better finished, uh, and it's pretty cool. I quite like it. Um, and like size wise it is pretty good even compared to other like 18350 lights so if we have a look here we've got the uh, Elf C1 and the uh, Imolet there we also compare it to say something like this Kolaris which is a uh, 16340 light so you can see although it is a 18350 light um, it's actually smaller than the rest of them which is good to know smaller and lighter awesome So we'll just keep on running it. You can see it picked out at 77, it's sitting at 74 quite well. The temperature is now at 29, 30. Output's dropping down to 60, 59, 58, 54. It's coming up to 30 seconds now. So after 30 seconds, it sits at 48. And it stays there for a while. Let's see what sort of temperature I can get up to in a minute. So 48. Basically, it's 16.6 .6 times 48 will give you the amount that this is at. So, what's that? Around about 800 lumens. 760 lumens once it steps down. And that's about a minute there. So not too bad. The light's only at 35 degrees Celsius. Alright guys, so we've got the Imolent LD10 on outside now. Um, this is the 10 lumen mode. Uh, you can see it is pretty bright, probably brighter than 10 lumens. It gets all the way to the fence, to be honest. I think it's like 60, 70 lumens maybe. I don't know how um, Imolent got it so wrong, but it's pretty bright. If you can see it on the camera, and I can see it with my own eyes all the way to the fence. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Um, UI is pretty easy. <laughs> that one button, you just push and hold and... That's it, you can change mode. You just gotta locate the damn button first because it's a bit hard to find. So, next mode up, use 150 lumens. Uh, you can see it's actually a pretty bright 150 lumens. Lights up the whole backyard pretty well. Let me just put the camera there. And uh, next mode up should be, is it like 3 or 500? 500, 500, I think. Oh, well, lucky this light tells me. 500 lumens is the next mode up. This will be more than enough light for any EDC, I think. We'll go to the tree at 100 meters and see if it makes it. What's wrong with my tripod? It won't turn. There we go. 100 meters. Oh, barely. Only just. Okay, push and hold the button. And we've got our last mode, which should be 800 lumens, which it is. And then the next mode, 1200 lumens turbo mode, is uh, hidden. So this is 800 lumens, more than enough light. Uh, we'll click up before it gets too hot. Double click and that's 1200 lumens there. We'll go to the tree at 100 meters. Yeah, it gets there just, but it's pretty spread out. So yeah, more than enough light I think. For most people and most people's needs. Uh, it is getting hot. The screen still says 1200 lumens, but I know it does step down, as we just seen from the uh, ceiling bounce test. Still saying 1200 lumens, but... Alright, I think uh, we'll compare it to the uh, Army Tech 
to the C1 and see how it does. The Army Tech is a little bit beefier, so it'll be able to uh, handle the light output for a little bit longer. Now I can see it's clearly stepped down. I might give the light a few minutes off a break. Okay, guys, so this is the uh, Army Tech Elf C1 on, on its highest mood. Um, it was flashing red, so I think the battery might be a little bit. No, oh, no, it looks green. I was using it the other day, but the battery should still be okay ish. And to the left here is the uh, Emulet LD10. So Army Tech right, Emulet left. Emulet is already starting to heat back up again. But you can see it is dropping output pretty quick. But it does appear to be brighter than the uh, Army Tech ever so slightly, only by about 300 lumens, 200 lumens. But it does heat up faster, so yeah. But then it is smaller and lighter too, so I think it's like half the weight. Definitely more EDC friendly and a completely different style of beam too. The Army Tech isn't even really heating up yet. You can see probably about now, they're probably about even in output. Alright guys, same same. Emulent LD10 on to the left. And to the right, we have the Olight S1R. So, um, the Olight is actually a super bright light when you first turn it on, but it steps down so quick. See, so if we go to the highest mode on the Olight, it's stepping back down. My one has that problem that they ended up having, even if I try and step it up. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. But you can see what I mean. And I discharged the battery too. So, in that sense, the uh, Imulent LD10 is already brighter, got a bigger battery, um, and outperforms it. So, why would you even look at an OLED? Come on, stay on. You know you want to. Kim, no, that's it. It's gone. Ah, come on. Eh, when it first turns on, it's not bad actually. It's pretty bright. Alright, guys, last but not least, Emulet LD10 on to the left and to the right, Calaris XT1C. The Calaris isn't anywhere near as bright and it is a bigger light, but it's a 16340 light, so yeah. Um, can't really compete with it at all. LD10, much, much brighter. Is that the highest? Yeah, that's the highest mode. So yeah, LD10 outshines it by quite a margin. Alright guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, I think the Emulet LD10 is a great light, a great all-in-one package. Um, if you've got friends or family that don't know that much about torches and you want to give them a light that's pretty safe to use and easy to use and it should last a while, I'll definitely have a look at the Inlet LD10 for the ADC purposes. Anyway, as always, uh, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.